we're here to talk about the Acura ZDX and the Honda Prologue, and thankfully we have a good standard behind us, the Corvette E-Ray, because just like both the Honda and Acura, it's really a GM. And this is peak GM behind us, Mark. I'm always gonna be talking about vets. Look, I went to Detroit and I talked to the chief engineer off camera, and I interviewed the designer of this car to walk through the viewers why they would buy either the Prologue or the ZDX, because this is currently the future of Honda Acura, at least for the next couple years. These are their first EV products sold here in the US. Yes, the Honda E exists in Japan and in Europe, but this is going to be their stopgap. Yeah, so this is gonna be the biggest question. Why partner with GM for an electric car? Let's start there. So Honda, when you talk to their engineers, they are pretty honest. They did not want to waste the development money on a first generation EV that was not going to be competitive. They were late to the party and they knew it. And they didn't want to have the problem that Toyota had with the BZ4X, which they did with Subaru or the Lexus RZ, come up with a first generation disposable EV that wasn't going to be competitive. So they went to the OEM that they felt built the best EV architecture that wasn't Tesla, that was scalable, and that is General Motors with the Ultium architecture. It is entirely scalable. They can take that from everything from a Blazer EV to a Hummer EV. They can make it a truck, they can make it an economy SUV, or they can make it a premium vehicle. So in the case of the Prologue and the ZDX, the Prologue is essentially the Blazer EV, which means it's strut front, multi-link rear. The ZDX is the Lyric. The Lyric is multi-link front and rear, and it has optional air ride in the case of the ZDX. The Type S model is the sportiest variant. The way they got these things to drive like Acura is they went to General Motors, sent them an MDX Type S and some other, let's call it legacy driving signature Acura and Honda products and want engineer this car. To be entirely honest, whether Acura and Honda will admit it or not, they didn't do real automotive engineering, they did systems integration. They took the systems that GM built GM built the entire car, they manufactured it, they did all the engineering and went, I want you to change these variables, because cars are now essentially all software, to make it feel even more like what I'm used to, and they signed off yes or no. The interior, all the interior technology is General Motors. If you look and you're really eagle-eyed, you can see the HVAC is out of a GMC Denali, it's got Super Cruise, it has the head unit out of a Cadillac, and even the seats. The switch gear on the side of the seats are right out of a Cadillac Lyric, and they now have moved to a new audio system. Thankfully, it's not GM. This is gonna be the new audio system in all Acura products, but it's a GM. So how do you convince an Acura and Honda customer, somebody that might have been, have a long history, that they're gonna go and buy an electric car from them that's essentially GM underneath. Like, how are you gonna attract those customers? Or are they not trying to attract those customers? Being honest, the more I think about it, and talking to some other staff off camera, they're banking on the fact that the majority of people, people who aren't watching this video, aren't gonna know and not gonna care. And the people that adamantly hate General Motors, they're not gonna win over anyway, and they're not gonna wanna buy this EV. This EV, in the next couple of years, they sell the Prologue and the ZDX and everything else that they're gonna build with GM is a stopgap for when their EVs come out in like 2030. So let's cover that briefly. Honda already has an EV in Japan, but it is more of a city car. Honda E. So that's not gonna sell in the United States or North America. Everybody's obsessed with large cars. It'd be like the MX-30 for Mazda. It yeah, just, it, would it would be a disaster. Well. And really that's that's the core, oh, if we're gonna get anything across in this video, because this is a first look, Honda, to your point, is does not wanna make a mistake in a market flooded with first generation EVs. If somebody comes to buy it, there's a level of disappointment that they can only do X, Y, and Z with it, and it hurts their chances of making a future EV that's better. So they would rather release their first generation car when everything was sorted out. That means charging network has better answers, which we're starting to see now with switch to NACS versus CCS. Uh, not only infrastructure, figuring out how to get chargers baked into the price so people can come home and have a charger installed, and some of the battery tech figured out, electric motor tech. And by 2030, when Honda releases their next generation cars, you will be happy to go into a dealership that already has training for how to support an electric car. You have an infrastructure that's ready and all of the other things that go into releasing electric cars. So it's kind of smart in a way of like, if you come into a dealership and you want an electric car, they have one. They have one to lease today. 
I think it's an interesting way to do it. I think it's a very, very conservative way to do it, but I would rather see something that's sorted out. Like to your point, you drove the Lyric and really liked it. So if the ZDX is anything like the Lyric with some, some Acura spin on it in terms of suspension drivability and getting rid of some of that like generic Bodhi feel, bad audio system and the yeah. Lyric, it could be a really good driving vehicle. Also, Acura and Honda is not Toyota or General Motors. They don't have the money and they have to be smart with the resources they have. But I think it's time for us to hear from the designer. Hi, well, thanks for having me. So my name is Andrew Foster. I'm the exterior design lead for the Acura ZDX. Uh, I've been with Honda approximately 16 years, uh, held various positions at both creative and management, but uh, this was an exciting project for the design team in Torrance, and I'm happy to talk about it today. How did you figure out what was going to be physical in the control structure versus touch, and how did you find that balance between this being a futuristic product, you know, this is an EV, this is for a, you know an early adopter in the Acura customer base, but also still feel like a normal vehicle? Oh, that, that's actually a, quite a tough question. <laughs> I think obviously there's challenges. Uh, we have to share certain things, especially with the interior, the, the electrical architecture, yeah. the interfaces. Um, for the team, it, it's about having that driver focused again. So we still have the meter, we have the center DA, and that we felt still built and emphasized this is a driver's car moving forward. Not just um, a laptop. You basically, yeah, it's not just a, a big iPad within within the interior. So I think it, it may, some people may see that as too traditional, but I think it also will help Acura stay true to it, its driver-focused nature, at least with the first Acura ZDX. Well, I largely agree with you. I mean, cars aren't laptops or phones yet, so the fact that you've used legacy controls, definitely, at least based on our viewer base, is probably viewed as a huge win. Um, is there anything you want to talk about? I mean, you guys have now, you've unveiled this at Pebble. This is sort of your deep dive media event you're having here in Detroit and you've seen the reactions of people online, what do you want your future customers to know, at least from a design perspective on this car? This, the Acura ZDX is the first step for us in our journey towards electrification. Within the studio in Torrance, the design team is always exploring, we're always ideating, we're always uh, creating internal concepts. Um, we teased the electric uh, vision design uh, study at uh, Pebble this year, and that's just, goes to show we're constantly pushing the boundaries. So I, I think the main point I would um, emphasize there, this is the first step in our journey and there's more exciting products to come that are gonna be inherently accurate, inherently performance-based. And as the EV architectures evolve, it's gonna enable us to really change up what performance means for electrification and Acura as a brand. It's going to be an interesting five to ten years yes. as we watch all of the legacy brands like Acura, Honda, Ford, GM start to move into the EV future for better or for worse and what you guys as designers are capable of doing with essentially ground up platforms. So Mark, honestly, just to conclude this, if this car has some of the character of the MDX Type S, it has the better dealership and really service experience of an Acura product, you don't have to go to a crappy GM dealer and you are a buyer who doesn't know or doesn't care that it's a, not a true Acura Honda product, you'll probably really like this thing. Goodbye.